Hey guys, what's going on? Spipbrix here, back for another LEGO Ninjago video, and in this video, I'm going to be checking out 10 secrets, fun facts, and references hidden in the Ninjago sets for 2019. Many of the topics that I'll be covering in this video are easter eggs put in by the LEGO designers and the creators of the box art in order to add a little spin onto the set, however there are also a few mistakes and some really cool facts about these sets you probably didn't know, and so be sure to stick around for the entire video so you guys can see all 10, and definitely be sure to watch number 1 because it's pretty much 4 different secrets put into 1. If you do go on to enjoy this video, a like rating down below is very much appreciated, and also also, if you're new, be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so you guys do not miss out on any further Ninjago action. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into this list. Number 10. To start off the video, we're going to be checking out the box art for the Ninjago Legacy sets and a mistake that actually slipped by LEGO as they were designing these boxes. You may have noticed on the bottom left hand corner of each of the boxes there is a little featured overlay tab that actually tells you what season this build that is the set first appeared in. And although it does appear that every single set in this wave has that little overlay on the bottom left hand corner which I personally really really like, there is one that's actually missing. And that is the Ultra Dragon. If you look at this image here on the very bottom left hand corner of this product image, it just has the QR code, it even has the little red arrow, and it has Pythor on the top which we know it should say Season 1, however there is no text there. And so at first I was really thinking this was just a graphical error, probably just with these product pictures, but no, it's not. This is an actual mistake, and I know this because on eBay there's actually a seller from Canada that's selling the Ultra Dragon set here, and if you look at the product picture in front of you right now, you can notice that there is once again no text on the bottom left hand corner. And so apparently this was mistakenly forgotten whenever they were designing the box art for the Ultra Dragon. I personally found this really crazy, LEGO hardly ever messes up. They're the last mess up on a Ninjago set that I remember was back from the LEGO Ninjago movie. They had messed up with the Kai minifigure on the first couple editions and prints of the box. So maybe this will get fixed down the line, maybe they'll even see this video. I don't really know, but let's go ahead and move on to the next secret. Number 9 For number 9, let's check out the spinners for the 2019 wave of Ninjago sets. Of course, they are revised for this season, but I really like the fact that LEGO brought them back. Now, what we're looking at here are the printed tiles that are on each of these spinners. Each of the ninja, as including Garmadon and Wu, have these 2x2 two two printed circular tile pieces, and we've seen these before on the Spinjitzu Master sets, the Dragon Masters, also some of the Sons of Garmadon sets had a few of the different tiles, but we have never gotten Lord Garmadon's 2x2 two two tile, and so in all of these different spinners, none of them are new to this season except for Lord Garmadon. We've never gotten those prints before, and so this is just a little fun fact that maybe you didn't pick up on, the fact that we've gotten all these tiles for the other ninja before, but Garmadons here are completely brand new, and so it's really cool to be getting these printed tiles, and so if you do end up picking up this set, well, this is the only set that you guys can get these four printed tiles for Garmadon. Number 8 now let's check out one of the very large sets for this wave of Ninjago. This is set number 70670, the Monastery of Spinjitzu. You guys have probably heard a lot of good things about this set. I really like it, there are amazing details in this set, the actual build of this monastery we've wanted for a very long time, but really that's beside the point. What we want to be looking at for this secret is actually the tea set that is comes included in the main build of this monastery. Going back to the very early days of Ninjago and those very beginning episodes, Sensei Wu has always been drinking tea, it's his favorite drink, and now finally with the monastery we can recreate some of the 
very, very famous scenes in the Ninjago community just from these original episodes of Sensei Wu drinking tea from the porch of the monastery while watching the ninja train on the obstacles. The only thing that is different is that the tea set we get in this set is not a blue or a light blue color. It, in fact, is white, which is a little bit disappointing. If they would have just went out of their way to change the color a little bit, it would have been fantastic. But it is still a really great addition and a cool little piece that, you know, they didn't really need to include, but they did, and it's very, very nice. Number 7. This has got to be one of my favorite revisions for these Ninjago Legacy sets. It's in the Golden Dragon set here with 171 pieces. This is a very nice little set. Comes with three cool minifigures in it. But we want to be focusing on the Golden Ninja. I've done a review on him as well as a comparison video if you guys have not already checked out those on my channel. But if we compare it back to the original Golden Dragon, you may notice something funny about the Golden Ninja Lloyd minifigure and that he's holding the Dragon Sword of Fire, which was originally Kai's original golden weapon. And this set always made me puzzled and super confused. Why is he holding the Dragon Sword of Fire? Why would LEGO give him that sword? Other than the fact that it looks cool, it just doesn't make any sense. And this would almost make me irritated whenever I see this set. But now finally, we got an actual just golden sword instead of the Dragon Sword of Fire. You know, it's not as cool, but at least it makes a little bit more sense. I'm glad that they cleared this up, and although, you know, it may not mean too much to you, I personally find this as a very good accomplishment for LEGO to actually realize that Lloyd does not ever wield the Dragon Sword of Fire at all, ever. Number 6. Let's go back to the Monastery of Spinjitzu set and take another look at it. Not only is it one of the largest sets in the wave, but it also has a lot of very cool little easter eggs and secrets and references back to the original days and TV show of Ninjago. Most likely you've noticed the murals and artwork amongst this set kind of on the different walls showing some cool little easter eggs and references. However, that's pretty obvious. That is not what I want to point out here, but actually the lonesome chicken, the golden chicken down there in the bottom right hand corner. Now obviously the main question associated with this chicken is why in the world is it even in this set? I mean, there really hasn't been an instance where a chicken has had a very large impact on Ninjago as far as I can remember, and the only one that I can really think of is that sort of short video that was put out around the Ninjago movie in which there was this chicken that was like creating total destruction, and I guess maybe that's where it's from? I really don't really know, but that's the only instance, and why else would there be a chicken in this set? Just why? If you guys have any ideas, let me know below. Number 5. Continuing on, not every single one of these references, easter egg secrets, facts, whatever you want to call them, can be necessarily on a serious note, as was that chicken on the last one, and this one, we're going to be talking about another one that, just take it lightheartedly, this is Jay's Terrible Aim. If you look at this set, Jay, what are you doing? You just aimed and you completely missed both of the Serpentine that you're trying to hit. I mean, really, Jay? Come on. You, your friends can do it much better. We have Cole here in his Earth Driller, who actually launched some studs at the Giant Stone Warrior. I mean, whatever that really is going to do. We also have Kai's Blade Cycle and Zane's Snowmobile, in which Zane had took some really good shots there at the Spitta minifigure, although we all know Spitta's obviously going to survive that and, you know, take him out. And even the Golden Dragon had a pretty good attempt at shooting a stud at the Overlord. And then you bring it back to Jay Stormfighter here, and just the artwork and detail of this box just has Jay shooting off his missiles just randomly in front. There shouldn't be anything out there since the set doesn't include anything else. I don't really know. Of course, this is just supposed to be taken lightheartedly as sort of a joke. But Jay, your, your aim just has not improved. Number 4. Here's the second interesting thing about the Golden Dragon remake here. Now, this set not only has the revision of the sword that the Golden Ninja is holding, but it also has a brand new dragon head that is going to basically be the first of its kind. Not only is it the first that actually has a stud shooter in its mouth, 
it's a smaller head than any of the dragons we've ever gotten. In the past, all the smaller dragons we've gotten have had brick-built heads, however this one is the only exception, and so this is just a fun little fact and interesting detail about this set that I decided to include in this video. Number 3 at number 3, let's check out a secret from a set that we haven't really looked at in this video. This is Kai's Blade Cycle and Zane's Snowmobile, and what we're going to be looking at is the Ninjago language that is in this set, over on the right hand side of the box art there. Now ever since the LEGO Ninjago movie, LEGO has definitely embraced this Ninjago language and has continued to include it in quite a few different sets, and this one is no different. If you see the box at the very bottom there, that sort of bin that has has a stick of dynamite in the back, you may notice the two sort of Ninjago words that go across it, and if you bring it into the translator, which is still an active website you can go to, it translates to, well, simply keep out. And although that's pretty an obvious statement regarding that there is an explosive material in that basket, I just wanted to point out the fact that Ninjago language is still alive and thriving, and not only is it in the episodes, but it's also still making appearances in the Ninjago sets. But with that, I want to pass the question off to you. Do you guys enjoy the Ninjago language being featured in sets, or do you guys just not really like it since it's hard to read and you need to translate everything? I want to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments below. Number 2 at number two, we have a topic that's been talked about a lot in the Ninjago community recently, and that is about the female ninja of the group, Nia. Now, Nia never became the official water ninja until around possession season of Ninjago, and yet she is a ninja in these sets. Not only is she in J Stormfighter, but she also has her own Spinjitzu Spinner in her ninja robe. I can definitely see why she is in her ninja robe in the spinners here, since it does kind of seem like from the mini episodes that we got for Legacy that they are going back and training, training to be even better ninja, and so the spinjitsu part totally seems normal to me. Now, as far as the sets, especially J Stormfighter here, you know, it's kind of iffy on the fact. I mean, I'm totally fine with her being in the sets, but even in the short episodes that we got, when J recalled the memory of his Stormfighter, in that sort of scene, Nia was nowhere present, and that kind of makes it kind of interesting since these sets are definitely based off of those mini episodes that we have gotten. Not to mention that we do have the Samurai Mech set in which Nia is Samurai X, but with all that, let's go ahead and check out number one, as well as a quick bonus secret that I have for you guys afterwards. Number one. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, number one here is basically four secrets put into one. They all share a common trend, but they are all unique, and that's what's really cool. I decided to include them all as one, just because they do fit together. We have the Monastery of Spinjitzu having another cool little secret attached to it, which is that the original elemental dragons can actually be seen in the background image of this set, and that's just a cool little addition that LEGO decided to put in as they were designing the box I definitely appreciate the extra effort and extra attention to detail as they were designing these. But this trend does not stop there. You guys saw from the thumbnail, we have Jay Stormfighter, in which on the back side of that, we can see not only the Fangpire Wrecking Ball from the Serpentine Season, but also the junkyard where Jay grew up. And continuing on, we have Cole's Earth Driller with a cool little feature in the back. I believe that's Garmatron back there from the final battle. It may not be, but I think those little pillars on the sides definitely give it away, or at least it's got something to do with the final battle in the Stone Army. And lastly, we have this Samurai Mech, in which in between the build, you guys can clearly see the very ancient skeleton which houses the cave or the base for Samurai X, and that's a really cool addition as well. And so those are the 10 secrets in the Ninjago 2019 sets that I wanted to mention to you guys today. But before you leave, we've got one more bonus secret that I want to let you guys know, more so just a feature of these sets. 
And so as a bonus before I end off the video, I do want to just let everyone know in case you didn't already that the QR codes on the bottom left hand corner of these boxes actually take you to an exclusive sort of promotional video for the set itself on the LEGO website. The QR codes do actually work and in fact they've been working for a very long time. Whenever we first got like kind of blurry images of these you could scan it and you could get to that page. But you can still do that now, so if you guys have not already checked them out, do some exploring, go ahead and scan them, put them up somewhere so you guys can scan them, and uh, go check out the videos, they're pretty cool. And so finally with that, that's going to wrap up today's video. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys did, be sure to give a like rating down below and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. I'm Spit Bricks. If you guys have any video requests, be sure to drop those down below as well. Have a great holiday season as it is almost Christmas when this video goes up. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video coming very soon.